Welcome to my channel again. Today, I will share about a drama fantasy sci-fi movie from 2017 titled, Downsizing. Without further ado, let's get started. Two scientists named Dr. Jorgen Asbjornsson and Dr. Andreas Jacobson have become successful in an experiment for which they have been working for a long time. After they hug each other, the movie is switched to five years later in Istanbul, Turkey, where the scientists are invited to a convention center. While talking to the audience, Dr. Andreas explains how his institute initiated by Ms. Nelly Edvardsson 75 years ago, identified overpopulation as humanity's single most significant long-term threat in the 1950s. Their scientific research holds overpopulation responsible for all catastrophes, extreme climate and weather events and devastating impacts on food and water security. The institute has come up with a solution, which seems so out of its grasp, has finally borne fruit and is the only practical, humane and inclusive remedy to humanity's gravest problem. Dr. Andreas opens the box by saying that his colleague will show the findings. People are stunned to see tiny Dr. Jorgen, who states that his team has discovered a process by which all organic material can be reduced at a cellular level which can convert a man 1.8 meters into just 12.9 centimeters. Except for some fish and shellfish, no side effects have been detected in the experiment. Once the procedure's safety was confirmed, 36 volunteers, including Dr. Jorgen and his wife Anne Helena, underwent a short and painless experiment with a full recovery of about an hour. After the experiment, People were placed in a small gas permeable enclosure designed to protect them from the hazards of weather, animals and insects. The 38 volunteers are then shown to the audience with the very first small children ever born, and the waste produced in five years is equal to a half trash bag. People around the world are amazed to see the success of the experiment. Out of many people, Paul Safranik has become one of the great admirers of downsizing. However, his mother doesn't like the idea because scientists are making people small instead of finding a cure for her fibromyalgia. Ten years have passed. While some people like technology, a particular group of individuals think of it as a threat to their economy. Paul's mother has died, and he is now married to Audrey. They continue to reside at the house where Paul grew up. At a high school reunion, they run across their old pals, Dave and Carol Johnson, who has gone through the shrinking process and are now diminutive. Living in Leisureland, a community for little people, Dave and Carol brag to their friends about how wonderful life is. Paul and Audrey go to a seminar where Jeff and Laura Lanowski, another little couple, talk about the advantages of living in Leisureland and becoming small. Laura could buy diamond jewelry for just $83, which Jeff claims is their food budget for two months, proving that what is valuable to individuals of normal size is worth a fraction in Leisureland. The crowd seemed to be firmly committed to carrying out the downsizing. After thinking about their unbalanced economic crisis, Paul and Audrey decide to undergo downsizing. Reaching the facility, they are put through a series of questions to ensure that they comprehend that downsizing is permanent and that some adverse effects might result in death. However, the couple is too convinced to listen to the side effects. They will be separated for five hours, after which the couple can meet in the recovery room. After undergoing dental procedures and being shaved from head to toes, Paul regains his consciousness in the recovery room, where he doesn't see his wife. When he asks the nurse about Audrey, Paul is given the phone already connected to her. Audrey admits that she is at an airport because she had second thoughts while getting her hair shaved that she wasn't prepared to leave her home, her friends, and her life behind. Paul is enraged that she abandoned him in such a way, but now he can do nothing. When Paul is brought to his new residence in Leisureland, he becomes upset since he is now alone. He sees a news program on TV about how 17 Vietnamese activists who had been forcibly downsized had been brought to the US in a TV box. Nok Lan Tran, the sole survivor, was transported to the hospital, where her leg was amputated below the knee. Audrey's abandonment leads to the couple's divorce, making Paul more gloomy than ever. However, to start a new life in Leisureland, Paul works as a telemarketer. For a change in his life, Paul starts dating a single mom named Kristen. While having dinner with Kristen, Paul requests his neighbor, Dusan, upstairs to lower the volume of his raucous party. Hearing this, Dusan invites Paul to his party, to which Paul denies coming. After the dinner, when Paul tries to arrange a meeting with Kristen's son, she refuses, saying it is too soon for her. Enraged, 
Paul leaves Kristen immediately and joins the party, where he meets Joris Conrad, a sea captain who can't live without his boats. After having a complicated relationship with his wife, Kennard decides to live in Leisureland, where he now lives happily than ever. As the party continues, Paul meets a young woman who slips a drug into Paul's mouth during a kiss. The following day, Paul wakes up in Dusan's apartment lying on the floor. While talking to Dusan about his nosiness, Paul notices a cleaning lady facing difficulty walking. As an occupational therapist, he decides to help her, but when he heads upstairs, he witnesses the woman taking medications out of the cupboard. It turns out that she is Nok Lan Tran, the Vietnam activist who got her leg amputated years ago, and now she needs medicine for her friend who is dying. After examining her leg, Apple concludes that Tran has severe arthritis, which, if not treated early, can lead to severe consequences. However, besides getting treatment from Paul, Tran is adamant about taking Paul with her to see her sick friend. While traveling on a local bus, Paul inquires about her working as a cleaning lady, to which she responds that it is easy to work and get paid instead of living with selfish Leisureland host families. It seems like not all the people in Leisureland live a lavish life. When the bus stops, Paul sees some old worn-out buildings with small, tacky apartments inside. Tran shows Paul her friend Gladys, a housekeeper in a Leisureland, but after getting cancer, she got kicked out with no money. Seeing Gladys on her deathbed, Paul advises Tran to take her to a doctor, to which she responds that doctors don't do anything for her. Trans orders Paul to come again if he wants to check her leg because she is tired now. When Paul revisits her, it turns out that Gladys has died. Tran wants Paul to hurry up with her leg as she has a lot of work. Instead of repairing the foot, Paul accidentally breaks it, making him work for Tran as long as she gets a new foot. When Paul approaches Dusan's house for cleaning, he informs Paul that her foot will be repaired in a month, until then, he has to help her. Hearing this, Dusan decides to assist Paul in getting out of the mess. Dusan devises a plan to take Paul to Norway on a fake business trip. However, the idea doesn't work out as Tran is adamant about going with them. Telling Dusan that she was invited by Norwegian people once, Tran explains how she received sympathy letters from people around the world during her stay in hospital. One special letter came from Dr. Jorgen Asbjornsson, who invited her to Norway and apologized for creating something that can damage people this much. Hearing this emotional story, Kennard and Dusan decide to let her come with them. After arriving in Norway, the group embarks on a fjord trip where they meet Jorgen and his wife. When they first encounter Jorgen, he informs the group that because of ongoing methane emissions, humanity is in danger of extinction. Jorgen has assisted in establishing a vault within the first tiny colony to preserve humankind and a sizable population of animals and crops for food. Nok Lan feels that Paul should stay with her in Leisureland instead of going inside the vault. However, Paul wants to be a part of the struggle to prevent the extinction of humanity. The colony has one last view of the setting sun before entering the vault. After saying goodbye to his friends, Paul enters the vault, but before the door closes, he decides to join Tran in helping the outside world. Heading out of the tunnel, Paul hugs Tran and promises to spend his whole life with her. Just then, a siren rings, making the rock fall on the tunnel door. The movie ends with Paul returning to Leisureland with his friends, where he continues working for people in the slums with the assistance of Tran. Subscribe for more engaging videos like this. Let's hit the bell icon and be the first to watch, like and comment.